Welcome to our Lunchtime Live program on WJEJ. This is Will Kaufman from the Public Information Office of Washington County Public Schools. We're here the third Thursday each month, a partnership between the school system and the radio station to talk with folks uh, from all over the school system with various aspects of public education uh, as our topic each month. We're glad to have you join us, and I am certainly glad to welcome Sally Irwin, who is our Teacher of the Year. Uh, we will talk with Sally for the half hour. You're also welcome to call if you'd like, and uh, if you have something to uh, either ask or talk to Sally about, we'll be glad to uh, entertain that. Our show today is sponsored by uh, Hagerstown Honda, a big supporter of the Teacher of the Year program uh, here in Hagerstown and Washington County, uh, and uh, sponsoring today Blackboard on a mission to reimagine education. Congratulations. Thank you. Look at you, <laughs> Teacher of the Year. I know. Of the year. How did that feel that night? Well, it's, it's not as if you haven't been there before. That's correct. Um, well, I, I felt very overwhelmed. I, I I didn't expect it, and it was it was just a roller coaster of emotions. It was very exciting, and I kept saying, "I can't believe it." You know. Um, Tell us about uh, for those folks who don't know the process from from nomination to announcement. How how, how did how does that go? What, what are all the things you go through as a nominee and then ultimately a finalist? Okay. When you find out that you've been nominated, uh, you get an email and there's a packet that you need to uh, fill out. There's probably four essays and then just a, a bio of um, your activities in the community, awards, uh, your education, your background, things like that. And that needs to be submitted uh, through the Chamber of Commerce to the Chamber of Commerce, and then, um, and once they announce the finalist, uh, they'll come into your classroom if you're a finalist and present you with a, a, a certificate. And from then, you have uh, a series of people that you don't really know who they are. There's a committee uh, uh, that are comprised now of, that I know of, you know former teachers of the year, right. some people that represent the school board, and people that represent the community. And they come in unannounced and do classroom visits. And then after the classroom visits are over, you are uh, interviewed with them. Um, there's pr probably five or six questions, and and then that's it. You know, And then you go to the dinner. Do you feel more comfortable? Have you felt more comfortable over this last year or two because you, you've been nominated? And, and one reporter's opinion, rightfully so, over these years. D does it feel more comfortable as the years go where you've been in the process and you know how it goes? Or is it the same? I, I don't know you yeah. that well, so well, I, 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 I don't know if you get the shakes over anything like this <laughs> regardless. No, it is. it does get more comfortable. And I think, you know, as, as, it, as I've been nominated, um, People come in and, and it, they come in to see what I'm doing, you know, and I don't change, you know, you don't know when they're coming. So it's not like you can put a dog and pony show on and you just, right. <laughs> you do what you're doing. And if they like what they see, it, it, it is, there is a little element of, you know, just uncomfortableness right. during that period. Always, you know, wondering if people are going to come in. But this year, honestly, I, I really wasn't that nervous at all. Sally Irwin teaches biomedical science at Washington County Technical High School, which is enough to earn an award as far as I'm concerned every year, <laughs> much less Teacher of the Year. Uh, when, If any of us would come to your classroom, what is going on in there? Okay. Well, my classroom is very project-based learning, so um, you, you won't see me lecturing a lot. You know, We'll introduce a topic that we're going to be um, investigating for the day and the students really have to take ownership of their learning um, a project lead the way is the uh, name of our curriculum and they're just one of the finest um, products of stem education mm -hmm. that is in our country uh, it is real-world learning students are taking responsibility for their learning, they're making connections to the real world, they're solving problems, and they're working in groups. So they're doing a lot of the things that kids are going to need to do when they when they actually get out into the workforce. You know, getting along with people, trying to work together as a group, um, and just the, some of the things they are doing. Like, I was a science person, you know, my, I've had two other degrees besides teaching. Right. And uh, 
the things that I get to do with high school students is amazing. I, we're doing some of the things that they, they won't get to do until they're in their upper level science classes in college and we're doing them in high school and we've got the equipment and the tools to do them which makes it you know we're not just talking about doing them we're actually doing real authentic science and it's cool. how long have you been there i mean how, talk about the transition between what you had done before and how okay. and how you ultimately reached tech high okay well i went to wvu and um my first, my bachelor's degree was in medical technology, and I worked in clinical labs and clinical um, research um, for about five years. And then I went back to school and I got a an, an, uh, master's degree in environmental health and safety engineering. So I kind of took my medical knowledge, but took it to industry. And I worked in pharmaceutical companies primarily, but I also worked in chemical companies i worked in a oil refinery so i had just this weird knowledge of 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 how the world works um then about 20 years ago uh, my husband and i moved to hagerstown and we had a two-week-old baby at the time Mm. so i never went back to my job back in pennsylvania and i stayed home for eight years and as she was going through her process of school i started volunteering and her uh, preschool and then her elementary school and I was very active and I kind of liked what I saw and I thought this is what I want to do I I I just I think seeing her grow and seeing like all these great teachers that were having great impacts on her life made me want to do that so I went back to school and uh, I went to downtown Frostburg and I got a master's of arts in teaching and at the time my daughter was in third grade and I thought I was going to be an elementary teacher, but the cert- certification process was like one through eight. I came out certified to teach. Uh, my professor at Frostburg said, you know, you have all this great science background. Why don't you do a student teaching in middle school? And I was definitely afraid. I was like, oh, middle school students are <laughs> yeah, they're right. so much bigger than right. elementary. It's easy for all. To, I, I think we're all afraid of middle yes. school. Yes. Yeah, that's right. But I, I, I did it in uh, my student teaching at Salem Avenue, and then I went to E. Russell Hicks. Mm -hmm. And at the end of my student teaching at E. Russell Hicks, a position opened in science, and I had a job before I finished student teaching. So I started off my teaching career at E. Russell Hicks, teaching seventh grade science and math for three years. And then I saw this posting for this Project Lead the Way biomedical science program at Tech High. And I had gone to Tech High. I had done some... um, uh, unraveling uh, physics uh, workshops up there for middle school uh, teachers to, you know, uh, bring more authentic uh, science to our classroom in physics. So I knew some of the teachers up there, and I just kind of liked the feel of the school. And I thought, you know, this is exactly what I went to college for, and now I mm. can teach it in high school. This would be really cool. So I applied, and I got the job, and. It was really, um, what happened with Project Lead the Way is Maryland, well, Project Lead the Way always had this engineering program, and it was, it's been probably 10 years ahead of us in terms of biomedical science. And uh, Maryland was, there were seven states that gave money to write this Project Lead the Way curriculum, and Maryland was one of them. So at the time, Dr. You mean the general curriculum as opposed to biomedical science? No, the biomedical science oh, okay, curriculum. okay, mm-hmm. sure, sure. And um, uh, Dr. Morgan wanted it in our county, mm-hmm. so that's how this position became available. So I was one of the first teachers in Maryland and in the country to learn the biomedical science curriculum. So that was eight years ago. We went down to Stevenson University, which at the time was Villa, Villa Julie College, and we were the first, there were eight uh, 16 teachers trained that year and we were the first trained and then there were 16 teachers trained in Indianapolis and we were the first teachers in the country and then the program has grown we're in every state it's just an amazing program um, and it's just been fun because you know the, the real world connections that the kids get to make are phenomenal uh, easier or harder that you were literally on the ground floor of that uh, I, th- I mean the you could sort of um, and the folks, the you know the folks creating that particular curriculum. Uh, when you ultimately executed it, did that give you a, you know some margin for 
like growing with it as, oh, as absolutely. you started? Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay. So there's four courses in the curriculum, and I was trained, and we, we went each summer, and we, we call it boot camp, because you go and you have to put a portfolio together. Well, for some of us, anything involving science at any is, grade level is like, is like boot, boot camp. camp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But for the third course, they asked me to be a curriculum writer. So I have been able to grow with it. I do a lot of professional development work for Project Lead the Way. Every summer since, for the last uh, eight summers, I have gone to Stevenson for two weeks. And for the, probably the last seven, I've been a master teacher for medical intervention. So I teach teachers across the country the curriculum to take it back to their classrooms. And then in the during the school year, the last two years, some teachers haven't been able to get to that training, um, and now I do an online like right. go-to meeting with them once a week and help them get through the year. Sally Irwin is my guest on uh, Lunchtime Live today. Today's show is sponsored by uh, Hagerstown Honda, a big supporter of the radio show today and of the Teacher of the Year program. Uh, and we thank Blackboard for their sponsorship today, Blackboard on a mission to reimagine education. We thank them for the support of the show. Uh, here on WJEJ. Sally teaches biomedical science, Project Lead the Way, biomedical science at Washington County Technical High School and is our Teacher of the Year for the next year, which entails, it's not as if you don't have anything else to do. Right. <laughs> and now you've taken on everything that is uh, under the umbrella of Teacher of the Year. That's not that's not an empty calendar by any stretch. No, it's not. But What's next? What's next on that? The I guess you prepare for the state, the state Correct. event. Um, and actually, last this past Tuesday, we went down to Maryland State Department of Education, all 24 county mm -hmm. teachers of the year, and we presented our books, which is our application for right. Maryland Teacher of the Year. And they gave us a little bit of what we can expect, but I, you know, there is something to do at, every month um, at the state level. So, how, how, Does it change what you do in the classroom? It's going to make me be more organized, um, yeah, you know, yeah. in, in terms of there will be days that I'll be out. So I just have to make right. sure that, um, you know, I leave awesome lesson plans and hopefully get a great God, sub. Who's, who sits in for you? <laughs> in that? I, mean, I, uh, I well, think that would be great. Actually, my name on the list. You should. Yeah, you Mr. Should. Kaufman's coming in to teach <laughs> biomedical science for today. How hilarious would that yeah. be? You know what? The students... Uh, they know what they need to yeah, do and, it, yeah, and that's and right, that's exactly. the greatest part because right. you know when they first come as juniors they're not used to project-based learning and you know i i definitely right. hand hold them a lot more but as they become seniors they know the routine they know what they have to get and they'll save questions or hopefully i've, I've actually asked a a current senior she's going to Hagerstown Community College if she wants to get on the sub list because I think she would be awesome hmm. you know and, and she would know the curriculum <laughs> right. inside and out since right. she's just completed it right so. and you get them as juniors so yes. they, they do the two full years with you yes in your program mm -hmm. who are these kids how do they get into the program I'm well, guessing you don't have yeah. anybody just wandering in to biomedical science no we our recruitment process at Tech High is in, in your tenth grade year. You get to just walk through the building and kind of take a look at all the programs we have to offer. And then um, back in December of that year, if you're interested, you get to spend a half day visiting with us. So usually kids will come back if they have an interest in science right. or in medicine, and they really. That's what I love about what I teach is that I'm already getting kids who want to be there. They right. they they have this, you know, a desire to do something in this field, so they're really excited about learning about it. So, where does that feeling come from? I mean, for kids because the there there's certainly a national emphasis on STEM, you know, on getting mm -hmm. on getting young people into science, technology, engineering, math, in, into all of that because the possibilities are endless and we're all better you know, when we're when we're more knowledgeable, more able, certainly more skilled in those areas, um, where do those kids get the get the desire to come to you? I mean, because it, it, that 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 just doesn't happen as a whim in their tenth grade year. I mean, these kids these kids have have built up something that leads them to you once they learn right. about the program. Well, I think most kids like science. You know, mm. I mean, and to me, I love science. And as a kid, I liked science because you weren't sitting in a 
you, you didn't have to sit the whole time. You know, you could be up and moving and exploring and asking questions and discovering. And that that's what made it cool for me. Um, I think sometimes from the medical aspect of it, it's like a family problem. They've had a family member or maybe they themselves have had an issue and they, you know, they're curious about it and they want to do something to help and maybe in that field. Um, and some of them, we've, we've had some great programs in our county. Uh, we, we had at one time uh, a program through the National Cancer Institute, the GEMS Yes program, um, which is uh, gains in engineering, math, and science, young engineers and scientists. And they, uh, in, in middle school, they got to come and spend a week just doing really cool science. And then it turns them on and they want to move on. Yeah. So uh, um, from junior to senior year, how do you... Uh, is the progress the same with all of the kids? I mean, uh, because they, they're some of them may start to get, I guess, an idea that what 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 are the range of possibilities for the kids you have? Like your seniors, okay. what what where are they headed? Okay, well, I have uh, one student headed to the University of Tennessee. He is got accepted into the bio uh, medical engineering program, and he got a full ride. So yeah, I'm wow. really excited. That's about very that. impressive. Yes. Um, I have two students heading to Wayne State University. One who wants to get uh, be a medical examiner. So she's, uh, hmm. I think she's focusing on biochemistry right now, and a student who got accepted into their pre-pathology uh, assistant program. Mm -hmm. um, I have students who want to. Uh, there's a lot that want to go into pre-professional. Some want to be physician's assistant. Some want to go on to be mm -hmm. a physician. So there's a lot starting on the biology track. Um, so kind of, you know, more uh, pre-professional programs, pharmacy. Uh, a lot of them want to be physicians, and some of them want to be biomedical engineers, too. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a range. Right. Do you, uh, How do you handle their their career, the, the early look at their possible careers? I mean, do, do you talk with each one of them? Is that, is that part of what you do to, to ensure that they're, um, that they're on the, the right track or they're, you know, they have right. the ability to explore the options as they go? Yes, when they first come in, that's probably one of the first things we, okay. we do on the first day of school. You know, well, why did you come here? What do you want to do? Um, and then we sort of discuss it. And part of the curriculum is we embed all different types of careers that they may never have heard of. Like we do an activity on epidemiology. So, you know, I have one who does want to be an epidemiologist now, and I don't think she might have ever heard of that prior to coming right. in and, you know, working with the curriculum. Um, so we meet a lot and when they leave their junior year they have to have a activities resume ready for me i'm i'm very conscious about them getting ready for college uh for me i want them to apply to you know any like five colleges would be great per mm -hmm. per kid mm -hmm. some do more i had one student this year who applied to 12. um and then that just gives them a, a the choice is up to them whether they want to accept these different places or not rather than so we we talk about that all the time that that is a big issue and when people start getting accepted and we celebrate that in my classroom it kind of gets people who maybe haven't been working on it saying wow i need to get yeah, on right. the ball here so right. um, i'm pretty proud i think this year we're up to uh 2.3 million dollars in college scholarship offers for my 18 graduating seniors right these so, are just your kids these are just my kids yeah so that i'm i'm really proud of that <laughs> oh my, that is that's a that's a huge number it is a all. huge number it, it is and and, it, and you know they can't use all that money because they're going to pick a school you know they may yeah. have gotten it you know yeah, scholarships right. from five right. schools but um it's still just an, an amazing it gives them opportunities and you know they they are in control of making decisions which is nice uh, we thank you for joining us today. Um, we're talking with, if you're just joining us now, Sally Irwin is our guest on Lunchtime Live. Uh, Sally teaches at Washington County Technical High School and is our Teacher of the Year. We always do our Teacher of the Year show after the announcement is made. Uh, we thank our sponsors of the show today, Hagerstown Honda, which is a big sponsor of the Teacher of the Year program, and we thank Blackboard for their sponsorship, Blackboard on a mission to uh, reimagine education. Um, speaking of Hagerstown Honda, you get to, get to drive the. I mean, we'll be shameless about this. You get yeah. to drive the car for a year. <laughs>
it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little fancier than what I currently have. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah that's okay. <laughs> Um, the, the program really, really is, uh, it's a very positive thing, not only, not only for the winner and the finalists, but I think, I think it's a good chance to celebrate the, the teaching force, what, what teachers mean to their schools and their school communities and the community at large. And I, I mean, I think, I think the folks who are then, who, who, who become the finalists and ultimately the person who becomes the teacher of the year, just, just reflects the the quality of the whole bag around the county that's the way i see Mm -hmm. it anyway i don't know i don't know how you feel about that no i think that i know because my daughter is a product of k through 12 in washington county there are amazing teachers out there and we're just representatives you know there is you know some teachers don't want to go through the process or for whatever reason you know they've never been nominated but they should so there is it's a it's an amazing group of professionals to belong to. I have been a part of a different workforce and teachers are dedicated. You know, they there's a passion there that a lot of other professions don't really have. And, you know, it's neat to see that you come to work because you love it as opposed for, to other reasons. Right. You know? What are your strengths and weaknesses as a teacher? Well, weaknesses is a, yeah. that's, that's maybe not the best word. What are, what are your strengths and what where where is there still room for improvement okay well i think my biggest strength is you know i bring a lot to the science community i'm excited about what i teach i mean there's just you know i just love finding new things you know that are out in in the news world and just some of the cool things that we've done like we build a a prosthetic arm because we do a unit on cancer and our patient loses he has an osteosarcoma he's 16 years old which is a very common cancer for a teenage boy Mm -hmm. um he loses his limb and the kids are tasked to build a prosthetic arm well now you know we actually we got to go to um, Washington DC and present uh, to the Senate floor we were invited to a caucus on career and technology education and um, those that was one of the product uh, projects that we brought but we tried to build wait so wait let me be clear (laughs) you and your kids were on the this the US Senate floor Yes, yes. With a little show and tell at a much higher level. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And, and and that's one of the things I love, too. And I think that's my strength because Project Lead the Way recognized our program, right. what I do, and they said, hey, we've got this opportunity. We're invited to a Senate caucus. Would you like to bring a group of kids? And, of course, I picked some of you know my best and brightest who also are good uh, Good presenters, good speakers, and you know we just turned them loose, and and it was fantastic. Um, but like things, we we tried to build a prosthetic arm using a three D printer, which we weren't as successful as we wanted to be. But we learned through the whole engineering design process. You know, there's some problems. We need to work on it. Um, but we we brought fingers, <laughs> so we. <laughs> We got those to work. <laughs> but I had a student who is my student who's going to University of Tennessee for uh, biomedical engineering. He brought he went home over the weekend and built two different arms on two different weekends for this uh, project. So, you know, you get them excited about learning. I right. think that's... It also He also makes the rest of us sick because we're going home and watching the ball game. Exactly. You know, so he comes and in. getting a bowl of ice yes. cream and he's building limbs. Exactly. You know? Yes. Mrs. Urban, look what I brought in. Look what... <laughs> I worked on this weekend. I'm like, does it work? And and that was a big hit. We actually had um, Senator Tim Kaine, who mm-hmm. is the former governor of Virginia. Yeah, sure. He was the Senate caucus leader, and he came over, and I, um, my student Max got to shake his prosthetic arm with the the senator. And during his remarks to the caucus, he he signaled our washington county students out and said you know not only are they doing really cool things in um science and engineering but they're working together collaboratively and um and he said you know we were the cool kids so that was kind of fun <laughs> well you can't there's no way to measure there's just no way to measure that kind of experience no not only for you but for the kids but you know mm-hmm. and the exposure for the school and for the school system boy tech high really is I mean, it's great imaging. It's great marketing if you yes. want to put it in business terms right. because there are so many good things, not just in your program. No, I mean, we're focusing right. on that today, but 
Mm-hmm. You know, you get around the building, and there's yes. there are innumerable things right. going I'm, on. I'm a huge cheerleader for our school because mm-hmm. I think we take the best of what education should be about, and then that is getting kids to actually learn, get excited about what they do, apply things. We take the higher levels of learning, of application and synthesis, and we're doing it in a multitude of programs. And then they're going to go out, and, and even if they go through our school and decide, you know, this is not for me, that was valuable too because they didn't go to college or, or hmm. go on and realize it wasn't you know they they're able to make some decisions right. earlier on well, what do you do, what do you do for professional development is that more about content and and you know current events current knowledge i mean gaining what's mm-hmm. happening in in the real world in your world mm-hmm. or is it about teaching improving te- it would seem like yeah. it's more about knowledge and content than right. it is about well, I like part of my professional development is is teaching the teachers down right. at Stevenson. So um, I am teaching the content that I use, yeah, okay. but I I get to teach a, a wide range of teachers. Like you know, there are to- there are teachers who come in and they've got PhDs in biology, and I'm teaching them. You know, so they can teach right. me a whole lot. Right. You know, when we when we meet there, and um, I was. Pro- Project Lead the Way offers master teachers professional development. They had a Project Lead the Way summit out in Indianapolis in November, and I was able to attend and just, you know, they had speakers there and uh, just different uh, technologies that we use. Uh, We're really trying to make kids get more digital, and, Hmm. you know, all of our curriculum now is on a learning management system, and so there's, there's a lot. To do so, it's about teaching, learning technology, and and I just naturally like to learn about content, so right. it's what I do. Right, and the kid is there ever a time where you have to, you almost have to inventory what you have available in a school year, and are, are there things that either you've had to set aside or that don't make the cut, things you'd like to incorporate? Because I mean, the 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 world in which you live in that classroom seems to be boundless. Yeah, I mean, is there's just yeah. stuff you can't use? There are things we can't really try. We we, we don't have time to There's get no, through. Okay, yeah, so, I, mean, I think that's no what it is. There's no point in getting after yes. a particular thing. Right, but I I really try hard to get through the whole curriculum um, mm-hmm. because it, it the students they have to be exposed to it. They have each course has an end of course assessment, and I want them to do well. So, however we do that, you know, we'll get through almost every single aspect of the curriculum. And right now, tomorrow, actually, my seniors are presenting their capstone research projects. So I have a group of adults coming in from, uh, I have three professors from Hagerstown Community College and the assistant chair of biology from Frostburg, a pharmacist, uh, some of our our local, my um, Sandy Graff, our uh, science supervisor, George Phillips, our our CTE supervisor. So the kids get to present in front of an adult audience, and it's a great experience for them, too, because it's almost like they're defending a thesis in college. Right. Aside from the value for uh, for these kids in these two years, what what are the niftiest things that, that, I mean, what, what gets the best, like most positive reaction of the things you present to them in their two years? What's the coolest stuff? Oh, it depends on the student. Oh, you know, it really does. Yeah. Like some kids, we'll, we'll dissect a fetal pig, and that's just amazing. And other kids are like, yuck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, people who want to do forensics love that. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, I well for me, it's like the whole biomanufacturing of proteins. You know, years ago we used to slaughter pigs and take their pancreas to make insulin, and now we use. You're making some of us really uncomfortable. I'm with sorry. Food. No, it's okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but now we use, um, you know, uh, recombinant DNA technology to like, right. I know, like cut a gene out, put a gene in. No kidding. Grow it in bacteria. And that is one of the cool labs because what we do, we, we mimic this process, but we, we don't use human insulin. We use green fluorescent protein from jellyfish. So if you've ever gone into the aquarium and you get to the black lights and all the jellyfish are glowing, right. well, we get bacteria to glow. And then we can take out what we put in to make it glow and verify that it's there through protein gel electrophoresis. <laughs> so we do lots of really cool things. And, and I think that's what I get the most excited about. how excited you are. I know. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. 
<laughs> yeah, at the highest possible level. That's, that's great. What's on your checklist of things? You know, I got to get better at this. What's in that category? Well, honestly, I think organization is just mm-hmm. always, there's just so much going on right. and, and trying to come up with better ways to hold students accountable without like having to collect everything. Because I, I feel, I mean, we've all been students. If, you're, if it doesn't count, yeah. if I don't have to turn it in, then I'm not going to probably put as much effort into it. So um, that would probably be, you know, just organization because there's a lot to get through and and I, I I feel like I'm fairly organized I mean we, we you know but I, I would say that's probably my my issue to grow and we'll probably find out in the next year just how organized exactly when you, you know when you I had know. a whole teacher of the year schedule to that's it. right I know yeah. I'm thinking this summer get on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right well, we got, we're out of time. Sally, that was great. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. And in official circles now, we can yes. call you Teacher of the Year here in Washington County. Thanks very much for coming, and good luck in this next year, and good luck at the state level, too. That should be that should be a fun experience. It, it should be a fun experience. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, Sally Irwin, our guest uh, from Washington County Technical High School, our Teacher of the Year on our Lunchtime Live program. Today's show has been sponsored by Hagerstown Honda. Uh, also a big sponsor and an important sponsor for the Teacher of the Year program and our show today is sponsored by Blackboard on a mission to reimagine education. Uh, our show is on the air.